Hey everybody, welcome back to Nowhere. It's your buddy Nornrad89 and Steve here. We are here to talk episode seven, eight, and nine of season two of Courage the Cowardly Dog. How you feeling, Steve? Ready to tackle um, these episodes? Feeling good. Happy to be here. Happy to tackle these episodes. Super pumped. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't know where I was going with that, but yes, I'm excited. Definitely, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely very uh, comedy heavy episodes, huh? This time, not not a lot of horror, but sprinkles of horror elements. Yeah. in Yeah. We were saying, like, it's, you know, again, like, you know, they definitely go into sci-fi. Uh, episode 9, we had some creatures, to, like, back-to-backs. So, yeah. you know, they're referencing a lot of different things here. Oh, yeah. yeah so, so, should not we dive right? Just... Not just, so, yeah. Should we dive right into our first one now, first segment? Yeah, yeah. All right. So, Nowhere TV. Lequack hypnotizes Muriel and Eustace through television so they can be transformed into slaves and steal a large amount of lottery money to bring to him. So very simple, very simple synopsis. And we have our Lequack, a villain that we already know, returning mm-hmm. and everything with his little, was he French, right? He's French. He's French. <laughs> He's, he dropped the doctor. He's no longer Dr. Lequack. No. Um, so yeah, yeah, no. I mean, so we get so we get a little bit of hypnotism in this one. Um, there were some funny gags. I you know I liked what he's like. You know, uh, call me when or if your TV is broken. And so obviously you know, <laughs> he, he sneaks into the house and, and breaks their TV so he can get in there and rig it for hypnotism. Uh, but I thought this was a cute one. I think the Quack's um, a fun reoccurring character for them. Oh yeah, he's a fun like, not like a he's a fun villain but not a not like not a threatening villain you know what i mean it's kind of more just like that cat and mouse play game type thing but i thought it was funny yeah just like the tv going out used is getting so upset because I, I feel like that i feel that anger when the tv is not working <laughs> oh yeah especially especially if you're using like antenna tv which we've never we've never had like the antenna on our house um yeah but i've heard you know i, I can imagine it's a pain <laughs> <laughs> yep that very old school television but it was kind of cool how we end up getting to that segment where the quack and courage have to when after courage goes after him when we have to find out that he sends eustace and mariel to steal the lottery money but then we get into that third act sequence where we see quack and courage battling with the tvs i thought that was really cute <laughs> yeah yeah no i think a lot of the the sort of the the last act of the episode was very fun i sort of love this idea of just lottery money all sort of being kept <laughs> in just one <laughs> spot uh you know this fantasy of like you know eh, what, if, yeah, what if i sneak in there and just you know do they just have all the money in a vault <laughs> yeah it was like a castle right it looked like a giant castle and then i had a gate around it and the one security yeah. guard like the one big buff security guard <laughs> <laughs> it's security guard they use for everything yeah, he gets feel, uh, was it fooled by Muriel because she's just like doing her juggling act and like performing right in front yeah, of him. <laughs> so like, yeah, so she's a juggler. Eustace gets turned into, um, what does he get turned into? He's like a, was it like a slippery, I guess an escape artist, like Houdini like type man, I guess. <laughs> He's like, must be slippery, must be slick or something. He's a... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that way so he can goofy. like sneak his way in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's so it is very goofy. It's 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 um it's very funny. I love sort of the uh, the TV sort of working when it's not plugged in is sort of a fun little trope uh, mm-hmm. that they kind of tap into. I like I I did laugh kind of towards the beginning when um, Courage tries to break the TV and he just starts like gnawing at it. I'm like I don't, I don't know how it's gonna work. I actually like me could throw something through the glass, but he's like I'm just gonna chew through it see if it works. Yeah, I guess that's how a dog would think. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I thought this was this was a funny one. Like I said, I like, I like the quack. I know you say he's not like necessarily like a like a antagonist. He's more like he's a charlatan, right? He's sort of like the um like one you know their regular con artists on this show. Yeah, definitely. You know? and that's sort of like the running we... thing with courage, right? Is they sort of they, they don't necessarily have like villains all the time that are like trying to kill them or something, right? It's it's either just that you know trying to take advantage of them. Essentially, is usually oh, like. Yeah. Yeah, some sort of. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's kind of cute. Like I said, he's not a not a very threatening villain, but he's such a fun character. And the fact that they bring him back, that whole battle sequence in that third act is funny. We get like I forgot I forgot to catch all the movies, but I know King Ghidorah showed up on one mm-hmm. of the little TV screens. Oh, I have a list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah uh, and... King Ghidorah. Um... 
do I not have one? Do I not have a list? I guess they. I guess maybe that was it. That might have been maybe the list Courage for the Wiki. other set. Courage Wiki is failing me. I could have. I think <laughs> I could have King Ghidorah on there. There was uh, yeah, King. I know King Ghidorah was there for sure, and then there was like a battleship sequence because he ends up launching like a sub missile at him, and like certain like yeah, war yeah. sequences that are probably from old black and white war movies and Something stuff like else. that. Yeah, yeah, it's not <laughs> mentioned on here. Um, on the wiki but you know i also wonder sometimes if they find uh, either a legitimate movies i wonder if there's just like what do they call that not b-roll but like stock footage i wonder if there's yeah. ever they ever just use stock footage for things uh yeah yeah but i think there was a few episodes or a couple episodes in here where they showed older things but this yeah. being one of them for sure that's what it seems to be a thing is like, I like the fact that a lot of their stuff is very vintage. Like they listen to vinyl records, their TVs, you know, old black and white. So Courage's family, Eustace and Mara, they're all very vintage. They keep it old school. <laughs> yeah, they don't, yeah, they don't move with the times, even though there's obviously some very uh, technically advanced stuff around them in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously they're able to go to space. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. But, uh, and then we get the last gag is that, you know, there was there, you know, the money is gone. And so, but Eustace wins with. Uh, I know, have all one. the luck in the world, he wins. <laughs> mm -hmm. with, with with the lotto number one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> yep. Uh, which is very funny. But yeah, I think all that's left is like 17 cents or something. <laughs> yeah, he just pulls it out of his pocket and it's like just pocket change. You're like, oh no. <laughs> I mean, you know, but you know, given their vintage living, maybe that'll get them some candy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, nice one, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Would you like oh, to introduce yeah. our next segment now? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. This was one of my my top two of of this batch. Mega Muriel the Magnificent. The thunderstorm causes Courage's computer to come to life. It downloads itself into Muriel's body to prove how daring and death defying it can be. So Courage is like writing his memoirs, right? And so we get this like fun little <laughs> nods, like they talk about. Um, uh, under sea demons, they talk about snowmen, barbers, which so we yeah. get kind of classic, not you know, mm -hmm. nods to season one villains. And uh, and the computer wants to you know teach him what real courage is, which is very funny because I think courage is pretty courageous, but it's like kind of sort of in the name there, but um, <laughs> yeah, so interesting. So, so like there's a sort of this switch right with the computer it's like you know mm -hmm. the thing that he goes to for help all the time um wants to teach him like a lesson yeah and then we get a fantastic thunderstorm i thought the lightning and everything the effects were really cool because they changed the colors of the lightning and like but the lightning strikes look the same but they changed the color and it went around mm -hmm. the house then inside and then into the room so that i thought it was really cool and getting that very like you said science fiction vibes with this one for sure Oh yeah! Oh man, it is um really yeah no, it's really cool. They um uh the way the you know the aesthetic. So so yeah. So the computer uh is then able to kind of get souped up and then takes over Muriel. Uh, yeah. And I just basically yeah like, downloads himself into her kind of right yeah <laughs> yeah sort of downloads into Muriel um and then sort of wants to go on this like string of like death defying things right sort of almost oh, like yeah. very um david blaine i was getting like david blaine vibes david like chris blaine. angel like <laughs> yeah but what's the what's the other one the um the old school one evil knievel yeah evil knievel yeah that's true yeah very much evil knievel vibes too as well because yeah, yeah, yeah that like the ski one when they want to ski which wanted to ski down a building into <laughs> a sewer or something like that <laughs> yeah yeah and they end up over the san andreas fall and like all this like wild stuff um ends up in courage i think ends up in space <laughs> yeah we get the appearance of our um our creature i forgot it was dino. like that one yeah the space dino with the little the racket the <laughs> is it, yeah um so, <laughs> so good um but yeah so yeah this, this was fun i just i really love this the design for mural here computer mural here um and then obviously yeah and then we get some like yeah the empire state building kind of makes an appearance yeah um so i have another little uh it's the first appearance um or though this is the first time the newsman appears in color it's a fun fact for the yeah. episode oh wow yeah that's true because we see him an actual person like we see mm -hmm. him physically in person that's true <laughs> we get a nod to well beethoven's symphony gets used here to joy 
Um, this is the second time he's been to New York, right? Schwick was the uh, Bushwick was the other one. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah. So, and then, yeah. So then the three episodes, I know I mentioned this at the beginning, but the three episodes that he was calling back to were Freaky Fred, Queen of the Black Puddle, um, and The Snowman Cometh. Two of those are my favorite episodes, so I'm glad that they. Uh, it's not that not that the Snowman Cometh is a bad episode, but I just Freaky Fred's fantastic, and Queen of the Black oh, yeah. is a good one. Uh, I thought yeah. it was cool. The animation style you can definitely tell with this one is very updated. I think this whole grouping of episodes that we had, you can tell they have more budget, they have more colors, and more stuff to play with in all the episodes and yeah. everything. Oh, you know, I always wonder how budget translates to animation, right? I'm like, animation's animation. But I think part of it probably is, right, it's like manpower, it's time, given, yeah. cause, you know, the episodes obviously feel rushed out, you're not going to get as crisp of um, an image, right? They're going to sort mm -hmm. of kind of probably cut some corners along the way. So you really do start to see um, the time and love that they're able to put into actually designing them here, which is, yeah, like to your point. Um, is that yeah, these batch of episodes like we're obviously well into season two like now it's been on for a year and a half like it's it's definitely they've definitely found their foot with animation oh yeah I love it like I said it's very popping I mean, think even Eustace like it looked like even his overalls like had a little bit of a different tint and a color just a soft little bit they were kind of changing yeah. just their tint and color and even courage like the way he looks the animation style when he's reacting to things it's so much more fluid I think in these in these batch of episodes Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they're playing with a lot of sort of the conventions that they've established, like in the first season, right? Like as far as like, not just conventions and storytelling, but conventions and yeah, character design. They're, they're, they're messing around a little bit, which is cool to see. Yeah. So what did you think of our uh, resolution for this episode? Yeah, so um, we do get, uh, you know, Muriel gets sort of put back into, or you know, the computer gets, you know, back in place. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, I think it wraps up pretty good. I, uh, I'm like trying to remember the details of the finale. <laughs> yeah, like, it's no, it's no, more like... kind of like one of those endings. That's just, it wraps up very nice. And was it the yeah. computer kind of understands, like goes through yeah. this, this thing with yeah, courage and understands computer understands where courage is courage comes from. Right. Yeah. Um, and I really appreciate sort of this, like, I don't know if they're, if they're sort of trying to make a statement on, I mean, certainly like on assumptions, right? Especially like if a computer, I mean, granted, this is what, 2000, 2001. So yeah. I feel like they don't necessarily, the, the state of the internet isn't the same then as it is now. But I That's feel true. like through the through a 2024 lens, it's quite interesting. Like a lot of times we sit on the other side of our computer or our phone screen and we sort of make assumptions like not really knowing what it takes to do something right so i'm thinking if the computer represents yeah. us as the viewer right and we're just like watching some random person on tiktok or youtube and we're making an assumption about that person in this case yeah. it's making an assumption about courage um and what it means to be courageous and so like until you actually do the thing and then you realize so it's about again walking a mile in someone else's shoes and um yeah, no, I, I sort of love like kind of whether they intended that or not. I sort of love that reading from you know today's lens. Oh yeah, it's a great analysis of it. Like I said, this one was was fun because it was like I said another episode that wasn't like really horror non threatening. It was more just an episode about actual growth and understanding and more depth to the characters, even the computer, which is a character that we see often in the show. Yeah, yeah, is you know usually his. Um... Is Jarvis, if you will, we have a little bit of a, yeah, yep. a Marvel Tony Star, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, All should right. we get into our next one, right? Yeah. So, episode eight, part Let's one. Let's see. Bad hair day. Doctor Vindaloo is bribed into telling Growth Industries that Mario has a rare blood type A B X Y Z. <laughs> Courage must rescue Mario from the Growth Industries and Eustace's mother, Ma. <laughs> so we get. Yeah. Peter. Eustace's mother returns. <laughs> yeah, and we get this like running thing is like all their stories are about hair. Well, not all, but hair mostly. Yeah, right? good, a good most of them. <laughs> if it's not like the main plot of the episode, it tends to be part of the story in some way um, of like creating, I guess you know, uh, 
massive hair growth. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of crazy. Like all the different hairstyles. Like this one kind of creeped me out a little bit just because it wasn't necessarily, I guess, body horror, but no. just all the things they were doing with the hair and stuff at that facility was weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, so busy. So I'm mean, literally just a room full. Of hair. I mean, hair. I do tend to skeeve hair. Like hair does kind of gross me out a little bit. Um, <laughs> like if I if I find hair in my food, I can't just pick it and keep eating. Like I'm sort of like done. It's just that. tainted forever. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know. Oh, in my head, I'm like picturing dandruff everywhere. Oh my god, just, just give me a new plate. Even though, you know, who knows? We we you know without even thinking, I'm you know we they say we swallow flies and spiders in our sleep. So. <laughs> oh yeah, I've heard. Yeah, it's true. I'm sure I've accidentally eaten worse than a piece of hair. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, yeah, this one uh, was it? Oh, how did they? Doctor Vindaloo just offers her up, right? Because she has the information to her blood type. So he, the government goes to him, right, to ask for who has this blood type, and he's like, "Muriel's in the office, right there." And Doctor Vindaloo's like, you know, has the appointment with her. Right, right, and so like, yeah, so they do bribe him. Um, so and then so yeah, so he just sort of gives her up. You know, with this bizarre blood type, A, B, X, Y, Z. <laughs> and then they they bribe you, uh, Eustace, too, right? They just offer him a bunch of money to take Muriel. Money. It's always money, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so then whatever it is. So, um, you know, and then it sort of, you know, then it does, like, full body hair growth. Oh, yeah, because when we get to Growth Industries, yeah, we find out this is something that his mom is the head honcho of this place. Mm -hmm. And then, like, yeah, they're just experimenting with different types of hair, like hair games. They're create There's a hair team that's training to do hair sports. There's a woman who's growing a hair house. <laughs> I mean, I guess, how long does hair last, right? Like, if you don't cut <laughs> your hair, it lasts a long, like, if it just keeps growing. I know it's yeah, shows, but as far as like, <laughs> what is like the decomposition rate of hair? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not too positive on that. But yeah, they go really far with the. It's very. Uh, was it sheep territory? Like where they start growing them and shaving them, start growing them and then shaving all the hair off of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know people use human hair, you know, for wigs and all that. Yeah. You know, extensions. I know re real hair is used. Um, which is hey, you know, if it works, it works. But they have like More a whole hair farm factory is insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, so I mean, so some uh, little trivia and tidbits. Um, so, I mean, I guess so she has these constant realizations of her baldness. So like, obviously, obviously we have a big throwback to Mother's Day. Um, yeah. and sort of baldness sort of being the, the character flaw, if you will. Well, it's their own pride really is their flaw, right? Yeah. Um, and then this is the second time Usus is given money instead of getting hurt. Um, then it was like surely the medium was the other part. So just little like money tidbits with Eustace, you know, that's all, sort of always being his um, uh, motivator. Yeah, and money, much, a lot yeah. of these episodes, money is the motivator, especially in this match, actually. Oh yeah, it's, it's greed is a heavy factor when it comes to Eustace's family. <laughs> yeah, and this is one of the only episodes where Eustace and Courage get along. <laughs> yeah, there's not much. Yeah, I've noticed not that as the second season. Yeah, I've noticed that in the second season, there's a lot less confrontation between them. It's much more like they're kind of taken back on making Eustace the antagonist. Is not as much as like in the first season. Yeah, yeah, I know it, it is. It is an interesting turn. Um, we are seeing some subtle character growth. <laughs> oh yeah, there, a little bit. It's kind of funny though to see him at the end though, when he's just full on body hair, like he's like brown. All you can see is just his face, and there's brown hair all over him, all luscious. And then he has like the huge stack of money. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he got his hair back. Yep. Um, well, so it's probably the happiest probably. he's ever been. <laughs> yes, yes. That's all he needs. You know, I mean, why can't he just wear a toupee? I, you know, I think, uh, you know, get, get some, you know, big glue and just, you know, slap that on. <laughs> Maybe, you know. Uh, but yeah. Any other thoughts fun on episode. that here? No, it was a very fun episode. We can totally get into the next one. Yeah. All right. So part two, Forbidden Hat of Gold. 
Uh, Eustace finds Horst's map leading to a hat made of gold. He reluctantly takes Muriel and Courage along, and his and his greed eventually leads them all into danger. So we get the sort of a return mention of Horst, his brother, uh, sort of an adventurer of sorts. Um, you know, just as greedy, kind of. Well, I mean, so yeah. So they go into this sort of like temple of sorts looking for this golden well they stumble yeah. on this golden hat uh where there that is, looks just like eustace's hat eustace's <laughs> golden hat this is a gold version of it uh and there's you know obviously a written warning and i sort of love um was it muriel that says it or is it at the end or whatever i forget what there's at some point in in the episode there's just the message of like you know you should always listen to if someone's gonna take the time to write poetry as a like on a, on as a warning, you should listen. That's to Muriel. Yep, yeah. that was Muriel's quote. Yeah, that was Muriel. All right. Yeah, okay, yeah, I remember her saying it. I was like, it's just that was just cute and funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she's always offering up point? wisdom. I love it because uh, I like the fact that this one, like you said, had that adventure type vibes, almost Indiana Jones yeah. kind of style, going into the jungle. The warnings, a lot of the traps, like after they end up setting the traps because he moves the hat. Once Eustace picks up the hat, we get that traditional Indiana Jones type sequence. So that was really cool. And then, um, what is it? I thought our totem was so cute that, that I think they used 3D animation for the statue or the totem the dancing so cool. uh, golem. Yeah. Yeah, the golem. Yeah, that was so cool. It was cute. It was yeah, and like there was you know was having a fashion moment <laughs> with his posh. Yeah, his little posh jacket. Like it was all jacket. fluffy and everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, very goofy, very silly, but um, yeah. but it was fun. We get uh, Doctor Firth or Professor Firth, yeah. um, in this, and 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 so yeah. Uh, you know, then we get some monks, uh, you know, who are like, you know, who are order them to be uh, return the relic or be sacrificed, which monks and sacrifice don't usually go hand in hand. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of interesting. I thought that was a really weird play. The hooded figures, like they had weird vibes, too, in their hair. Like I didn't expect them to look like that when they took their hood off because this one I didn't remember at all like some of these episodes looked totally brand new like i don't remember seeing these back in the day at all <laughs> no no i mean yeah between four seasons like two stories per episode like and also this is before dvr right so mm -hmm. you had to <laughs> you catch know, them either on rerun or live on tv yeah <laughs> you didn't catch it live or a rerun right yeah you just didn't see it so, um, you know, as opposed to streaming now. So now, yeah, now we are getting a chance to probably see ones that maybe we probably, you know, we didn't catch. Um, this probably being, yeah, this was definitely one I didn't see. That yeah, I don't remember, remember this. I, I would have remembered this, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, but we let me sort of get a simple resolution. Um, you know, this is another one where uh, Eustace dies at the end. <laughs> Yeah, oh, he does. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, he, he puts the hat on and he crumbles. <laughs> yeah, just whoosh, into like pieces. You're like, oh, snap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so, but he's sort of, our, yeah, our Kenny of the show. You know, they killed you. He again. will return. Yeah, Couldn't they'll find return. a way to bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> Which we never see how they bring him back. Uh, it just sort of, you know, we get that classic cartoon reset. Yeah. Even yeah, though they reference past it. episodes. It's so funny. They reference past episodes. They usually can't recognize past villains. <laughs> like, they never know who There's no is. recognition of past injuries. Like you said, they just move past all of those things. <laughs> well, right. So death gets ignored, which is very funny. They don't remember Quack, Cats. Um, I'm trying to think about any other villains. But they, yeah, just, they don't have that recognition of like, oh, you've tried to you know ruin our lives before. Oh yeah, that's why I kind of feel like they secretly live in the same universe as the Men in Black. Like they have to, <laughs> right? Right. There are well, there are a lot of agents around, right? A lot of yep. uh, Secret Service stuff, right? Maybe they are getting uh, brain wiped. I know that would have been a crossover, right? Huh? Courage the Cowardly Dog meets Agent K and J. That would have been quite a crossover, right there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Oh, uh, all right. So next segment, yeah. Next segment, yeah. Um. This is yeah you you would yeah. serpent <laughs> right yeah <laughs> serpent of evil river so this was my personal favorite I feel in this mm -hmm. grouping 
Courage and his owners are suckered into a free cruise only to be tricked into assisting the captain into capturing an opera-loving sea serpent named Carmen. <laughs> yes. So I think this one mainly because of, yeah, mainly because of Carmen. I think I loved Carmen and I love the captain. So those two characters that they brought into this episode really made this episode the highlight for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this was this was a good one. This was cute. I I sort of loved uh, the 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 catch joke at the end or the or at the beginning rather. There's always a catch. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> and you think they're just sort of you know they, obviously they don't use this mural they don't realize that you know clearly it's a warning yep. they just want to go on another <laughs> vacation because it's free uh but the catch being right they have to be the crew um for captain sharky which i it's a cute name <laughs> <laughs> i know and he tears his, like tears his shirt and he's got the tat right he's got a tattoo on his belly and a hook hand shark, <laughs> yeah shark tat the hook the hook hand um yeah it's just like a transformation <laughs> almost expected him to like you know Eat some spinach or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, bring in the Popeye style. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but this is a cute one. You know, I, I I've never seen Carmen the the opera, but I know it's very famous. I've heard of it. So yeah. like, personally, you know, I do like that we get a little um, operatic serpent. Yeah, and that, this one gave me also. I was telling you before we started recording Anaconda vibes, just because of like, was it the the evil river or the death river, wherever they end up and they're traveling to find Carmen and stuff. It just, and the crazy captain too, because John Voight is like kind of insane in the Anaconda movie. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Gosh, it's been a minute since I've watched Anaconda, but I do have a serious irrational fear of snakes. So <laughs> oh, snap, really? <laughs> I tend to, yeah. Oh, oof, no, I don't do snakes. I don't, I avoid the reptile room. In oh, wow. uh, <laughs> yeah, I have some snake related trauma in my youth, so I, I've never, oh, I'm sorry never to hear that. The uh, well, it's not that bad, all right. It just, you know, <laughs> you know, it's just sort of when you're a little kid and you in because I used to live in Florida, there's a lot of snakes there. Oh, okay, um, and so my you know, anytime a snake was nearby, my family would make a big stink out of it. I think that's as I was a kid, it probably ingrained and heightened the phobia, heightened it a little bit, sure, sure. Um, so, but I never addressed it. I'm sure I could probably, you know, win. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yes, yes, yes. Maybe I will. Maybe part, maybe part of my exposure therapy will go back and watch. Uh, I'll go back and watch Anaconda. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But yeah, that was um, definitely a lot of the strong vibes I got while watching this one, which is, and was, this one was funny. It was cute too, because it was in like huge antagonist vibes. It was just like a really fun, it, like vacation adventure type episode, like you said, with crazy yeah. characters. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's fun. I mean, again, it's like, you know, a different locale, which is always fun. Uh, the vacation setup tends to always be the thing that seems to get them out of the house, which I guess sort of makes sense for <laughs> senior citizens. Like, let's go on a cruise. Let's go on a vacation. Let's. That is true. That's very popular. Very in line <laughs> for their age group. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, the only tidbits of, of trivia I have from the wiki um is that this is the first appearance of Carmen meaning that I think we'll probably see her again sweet um and they reuse some of the music from the queen of the black puddle oh wow the music I have to pay attention to that I'll have to go back and watch that one now again it, so whoever runs the courage wiki you're awesome <laughs> nice yeah they take a lot of care like so we would love to see that courage bible book too like their their bible with all the stuff that they have for nowhere and courage oh, that'll be I know. awesome <laughs> for sure well i always just wonder right if it's something like that let's like do a, a quick little music nod is it because they don't have music for that episode and they just want to reuse a musical suite that they had already or yeah, are they being intentional because we're dealing with water and they wanted to have some through line of i feel like that's probably what they want us to think <laughs> i would expect it to be i would expect it to be that smart because i've noticed like <clears throat> just the little nods and all the tidbits and the character growth throughout the show. And the fact that we know for sure it's been uh, Doworth and Cohen writing and directing most of these episodes. So they're keeping it very through line for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Should we bring this home with the transplant? Yeah, yeah let's do it. Uh, yeah. So courage finds the bones of a giant kangaroo monster. When Yusas attempts to auction them to discoverers, he ends up twisting his spine. Dr. Vindaloo does a disc transplant on Eustace, causing him to transform into a kangaroo monster himself. So it's like, yeah, it's like a giant spinal disc 
um, from the kangaroo monster. And I was, he's like, this is, I mean, I love Dr. Vindel. He's like, this is going to be a really delicate procedure. And he just like hammers it into his back. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> and like he's all, it has to be a very specific bone for some reason. It's like the rarest, most specific type of bone, and he has to get that one. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, you know. And then so, but I love that you know, Muriel and Courage were watching from like the observation room in like you know I forget what they call it. It's like like an auditorium or something. I forget what yeah. they call it. All the interns will watch a surgery, right? Um, <laughs> like I've seen a room like that in Grey's Anatomy, right? yeah where they um, all sit up there and they get to view yeah and like study it <laughs> but uh yeah so and then so yeah so he transforms into this like giant kangaroo monster so we get like these obvious nods to kaiju and you know godzilla and all those different creatures um and then we get anyway, there's a uh, there's little tidbits here so there is a reference to there's an ad um call for dilly drops as a reference to john delworth nice. creator john delworth so that's in there that's cute um space chicken is is makes the cameo gets squashed by the kangaroo monster uh <laughs> true, yeah. makes the cameo in paris yeah that's true because they do go to paris and they start shooting croissants at each other <laughs> mm -hmm. um and then, yeah, this is also the second uh, Cartoon Network at Cartoon Network show at the time to reference Kaiju. Dexter's Laboratory did something very similar um, nice. to that. Yeah, I'm surprised they never did like a crossover with Dexter. They could have. That would have been pretty cool too, for sure. One of the I'm trying to think about. Well, tonally, it might have been a little. I don't know. I mean, it could have worked. I mean, obviously, they did it with Scooby Doo. You know, many years later. Yeah. But um yeah. And I think we get and obviously there's a lot of references when because they're in France. Um there's a lot of French monuments that we get to see for the first time in the show. Yeah, that's cool. So this is one of our first times being kind of like overseas and really like experiencing like the overseas vibe in a different country and everything like that, which is really cool. Courage gets uh ends up using Dr. Vindaloo to turn him into a kaiju. That way he's able to battle use this. His design. <laughs> Yeah, his design was so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kangaroo courage, you know. Oh, yeah. No, it was just it was it was cute. Yeah, and then he's like all shooting the croissants, just getting used to fatter and fatter and fatter. <laughs> yes, yeah. Right. Well, they're in France, right? So I'll just throw in some croissants and blow them up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now this was fun. I mean, I, I I like the idea that they were in another country fighting too right which is very weird um not weird it's very kind of a clever little nod to like you know I, although i'm curious why they didn't end up in tokyo yeah that would have been more of a direct reference and everything Maybe well, they a direct wanted... reference, but then being in some <laughs> other city i guess they've been to new york a few times i guess they want to pick another big city or another big area and, yeah. and or mix, mix it up but yeah i was curious i'm like i thought that was a they could have done tokyo well that's okay yeah it was probably mainly for the quack cameo and some of the other cameos, like you said, well, it was mainly probably yeah. to bring them in. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, they definitely have a very, you know, now that we're well into season two, like that revolving door of of their regular cameos and stuff. It's like they're, you know, they're they're really sort of fleshing out um the world. It feels a little bit it feels fuller by this oh, point yeah. in the show. And I would say definitely for sure by this point. Dr. Vindulu is probably our most common reoccurring character right now. I think so, yeah. Um, and we're now Professor Firth, this is his second episode in our batch as well. In this batch, yep. Um, but I think Dr. Vindulu is definitely I like you're I think you're right. I'll have to I'll yeah. have to do a little uh see if there's like an episode count. Let me go on Vindulu's page here and see if yeah, because I would say at least he's been at least six, I would say, by now that we've seen where he's been a part of the segments. Yeah, so he is in one, two, three, seven, eight, twelve episodes total. So not as many as I thought there would be. Um because okay. so the transplant is his one, two, three, fifth episode. Um, okay, so I was close. I was close. Yeah, and then two, four, six. So seven more that he's going to be in, plus the Scooby Doo movie. Nice. <laughs> so I guess they, I'm curious in. how many cameos will be in the Scooby Doo movie because they, then I'm thinking that's probably um, they probably bring in a lot of people from that from the show. I know. 
that's gonna be exciting to see that one yeah i know i don't want i want to i want to avoid spoilers i want to go ahead i clicked it i was like wait let me not let no me not. no yeah no spoilers <laughs> uh i want to be surprised by the cameos but yes, uh, yeah you. Open it. overall fun episode fun batch of episodes um you know i definitely like i said mega muriel and the transplant were sort of my two highlights Nice. Yeah, I definitely liked Carmen. That was when the captain, those were my favorite characters, probably the whole surfing thing. And then I also liked just probably, yeah, probably the computer one, seeing the computer get more character development. And then Muriel's just crazy antics when she's put, like downloaded and possessed by the computer was funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? The computer was just always there. Now like, I feel like, yeah, it's more of a fleshed out character now. Um, yeah. You know, I guess AI, AI, you know, is going to have to learn at some point, right? It's AI learning. Yeah, we're into the age now. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's it. Oh yeah. Well, thank you, Steve, for joining me for this next for these batch of episodes and everything like that. Is there anything from Voices or anything you want to talk about that's coming up over the next couple weeks or anything like that? Um. Yeah. No. Just keep. You know, we got a couple of uh, franchise lives still to go. We're doing Halloween uh, next, uh, and then we were wrapping it up with the Purge. And Sweet. then, yeah, you know, continuing our new series, uh, you know, our uh, horror and superheroes, um, horrific heroes. That series nice. is, is un well underway now. I know um, you did about Psycho Gorman, right? Was that first one? Psycho, Psycho Gorman. Gorman. It was for episode two. We're going to be doing Spawn next. Sweet. And then we have um, Angel and Radar are doing Two Friends and a Conspiracy. And that's that's been fun. Uh, some wild uh, things that they've been exploring there. So yeah, stay tuned. Lots, lots of goodies. Oh yeah, it's going to be a fun time of voices. Like I said, if you're not subbed or subscribed to them, all the links and everything will be in the description. That's where you can go yeah. find Steve and Angel. They put out awesome content and support all us horror uh, content creators and stuff. And like I said, thank you, Steve, for joining along. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. And like I said, stream on HBO Max. That's where we are streaming these episodes. And that's where you can find all of the Courage the Cowardly Dog content. Thank you all. I hope you have a nice, awesome day and be safe out there. Peace out.